This is the 25th anniversary of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Christ, as I get older, <laughs> I have to celebrate more anniversaries. <laughs> uh, and it's been 25 years. And to think about all of, all of the work and all the dedication, the people of the Central Coast, I think you have to know that the achievement of the sanctuary is the work of the good people of the Central Coast of California who are dedicated to protecting a national treasure called our Monterey Bay. The story of the Marine Sanctuary is really the story of democracy at its best. Democracy is represented by we the people. That's what makes our democracy strong. God bless our forefathers for understanding that in the challenges we would have to face as a new nation, this country as a republic was not going to centralize power in any one branch of government. So we would have this remarkable system of checks and balances. The primary power was placed in we the people. And it was we the people of the Central Coast when we were threatened with offshore drilling in this national treasure that belonged to us that really came together. And democracy and what we did is a reflection of the people of this area that came together to protect this area. For me, it's a reflection of the human qualities in people. Because democracy only survives because of you, because of the human qualities that we all possess and what we bring to bear to make to make our democracy work, to make it function. For me, it was the reflection of a young boy, the son of Italian immigrants, whose uh, grandfather, my nonno, used to take me down to the wharfs, and used to take me down along the beaches because he loved the ocean. He was uh, a mariner, a fisherman. He had sailed around the whole world in sailing ships. God knows what that was like in the early part of the 20th century. But he had a great love for the ocean. And he shared that with me. And in many ways, because of my grandfather, my nonno, The salt in my veins, President Kennedy used to refer to when he talked about the oceans and our appreciation of the oceans, the salt in my veins came from that experience and from his love of the oceans. It's also a reflection of family because as much as those of us in political office would like to believe that we kind of operate on our own. The reality is that nobody in public office can operate without the support of family. And there is no way I could have done any of the work or the challenges that I faced, not only in dealing with the, the challenge of Monterey Bay, but in all the other challenges that I faced without the support and love of my wife, Sylvia, and my three sons. And it is also a reflection of the great communities that make up the Central Coast of California. This 
none of this would have happened were it not for people coming together who recognized the threat we faced and who wanted to make sure that we could stop it. So businessmen, people involved in tourism, people who made their livelihood, uh, the fishermen, farmers, environmentalists, researchers, citizens, people who were often at odds with each other on a number of issues. Reality is they came together and elected officials like Sam, Henry Mello, and other local officials at the local level, mayors and city council, all came together to say we have to do this, we have to protect this area. That is democracy. That's how democracy functions. And when we were threatened, as we were, as Sam mentioned, James Watt made the decision that we would put the coastline up for sale to the highest bidder. And we would put the entire coastline and make it vulnerable to offshore drilling. And when he did that, my reaction, the reaction of the people of this area was, that's not going to happen. We're not going to let that happen. And I remember going to Don Clausen, who was another the Republican member of Congress from the, the coast, uh, Mendocino coast. And I said, uh, normal reaction is try the nice guy approach. And so uh, Don and I asked uh, Secretary Watt to come to his office. And, you know, sat down and I said, uh, Mr. Secretary, I understand the need to uh, develop uh, energy resources. And we have those resources. We have them off of California, got it off the Gulf. I understand that. But there are areas that are national treasures. Areas like Big Sur, Mendocino Coastline. These are as important as a Yellowstone or Yosemite. And they ought to be protected. And I said, I pointed to a picture on Don Clausen's wall of the Mendocino coastline, waves crashing against the coast. I said, that's the kind of coastline we're talking about. And Watt got up, I will never, never forget this. He got up and he walked over to the picture, pointed to it and said, that'd be a great place for an offshore oil rig. <laughs> and I said, oh shit. My <laughs> and so I said, you know, I sat down with Don and I said, uh, the nice guy approach is not going to work. <laughs> so we're going to have to take steps. And uh, we developed uh, the legislation to establish a moratorium on offshore drilling, which means you stop funding for anything that would promote offshore drilling and put it in an appropriations bill. And that had not been done before. And we faced heavy opposition. You can imagine, you know, Californians, I mean, the rest of the country, you know, hungry for gasoline, interested in developing uh, fuel supplies, uh, and so they're looking at California and saying these, these people uh, somehow don't want to participate in what we're doing. So we faced heavy odds with special interests and oil companies and all the opposition that uh, opposed it. But we continue to make the case that there are areas that need to be protected. And you can't just put up everything for sale. And the reality was as other members realized that they were vulnerable to that same kind of attack, they joined in that legislation. And so whether it was Washington or Oregon or Florida, we went up the coast, the Carolinas, New England, they all became part of the effort to pass the moratorium. And we passed it not once or twice, 
I think we passed it for 20 years. Because people supported it. But at the same time, I thought, you know, the days of the moratorium are numbered by the price of gasoline and by the threats we're going to face by those that will say, we've got to produce more gas. We've got to produce more oil. And so for that reason, we came together in this community to look for something that would protect this area more permanently. And even at that point, the Bush administration was not supportive of the effort. They had looked at Monterey Bay, rejected it, did not support it. I went to the administration, asked if they would consider uh, re-establishing uh, the sanctuary as part of the NOAA effort. Uh, they said, no, we're not going to do that. So, okay, nice guy, over. <laughs> we're going to do this by working legislation. So we drafted legislation to create the sanctuary. Uh, I remember going to uh, the committee chairman. Uh, we, they were doing a reauthorization of the NOAA program. We included Monterey Bay as part of that reauthorization. I uh, was able to get it through. Problem was the administration opposed it. So, using a little bit of legislative creativity <laughs> or sleight of hand, there's something, <laughs> it's abused these days, but it's called the CR which means a continuing resolution to fund the government. And I knew the president would have to sign it. And so I included, went to people on the appropriation side, and we included that legislation in the CR. And Bush signed it. And we had the sanctuary. Sanctuary is a reality because of democracy, folks. And working, working the angles and working all of the efforts, but frankly having the support of the people in this area at every level who are committed to protecting. I couldn't have done it without that support. So we celebrate the 25th anniversary, but let me tell you that tonight, is not about the past. Tonight has to be about the future. It has to be about the challenges that we're going to have to face as we deal with the concern of protecting that sanctuary for the future. You cannot, in a, you know, we develop the sanctuary, we're proud of it, but we cannot be comfortable with the fact that somehow it will take care of itself. That's not going to happen. We can take nothing for granted. In my 50 years of public life, never in that 50 years, did I imagine that I would wake up and hear that we were seriously thinking about building a wall on the southern border of the United States? Never in that 50 years did I think that we would seriously think about deporting young children of undocumented immigrants who are being educated in this country, are, have jobs in this country, are part of the military in this country, and yet we are threatening them with deportation. Never would I have imagined that two, now a number, of record-breaking hurricanes would strike our country, bringing disaster to communities in Texas and in Florida. And have, 
have leaders in Washington seriously say that climate change is not real. And never would I have believed that monuments and sanctuaries that were established for the purpose of protecting natural resources would be looked at seriously in order to develop those resources. But that's happening. That's happening, along with a lot more. And so our democracy is being challenged. And we are being tested. And so tonight as we celebrate this anniversary, the real question is whether or not those who inherit the responsibility of being good stewards will exercise that to protect this sanctuary for the future. That's going to be the challenge. And for those of us who fought those battles and put this in place and are proud of what this, these communities did in establishing the sanctuary, fact is that that responsibility now belongs to future generations. It belongs to Jimmy and to other members of the Congress and to newer generations on the central coast of California. And that responsibility now belongs to you. That's what democracy is all about. But you've got to fight on your hands. This is not something we can sit back and just take great joy in. We are going to have to fight. And you are going to have to fight to make that happen. And so I guess my hope is that maybe the work that we all did in making the sanctuary reality can be an inspiration to those newer generations that are going to have to have the responsibility to be good stewards of our resources. If I can believe that that will happen and that this torture responsibility will be passed on to those generations, then I think all of us can take some comfort in knowing that in another 25 years, and another 25 years, and another 25 years, we will celebrate the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Thank you very much. <laughs>